NASCAR is having conversations with Honda about joining the series, plus paddle shifters could be coming to NASCAR. Been a busy day leading up to the Daytona 500 weekend, and one of the biggest pieces of news to come out on Thursday morning is the fact that NASCAR has had discussions with Honda about joining the series. NASCAR COO Steve O'Donnell said that conversations are heating up with a potential fourth manufacturer, and reports are indicating that that potential fourth manufacturer is Honda which makes a ton of sense. Their biggest rival in Toyota is already in the series. They've seen great success with it. Honda is upset with some things in IndyCar. They could be looking to spend their money elsewhere. And NASCAR is a great marketing platform for OEMs. It makes a lot of sense if they wanna come over to NASCAR. Of course, NASCAR hasn't added a new manufacturer since 2007 when they added in Toyota. And they've been desperate like Tom from Succession to add another one. They lost Dodge at the end of the 2012 season. And since then, Nobody's really come knocking on the door to want to join the series. But now, if Honda, who, like I said before, is upset about what's going on in IndyCar, this could be a potential avenue for NASCAR to add that much-coveted fourth manufacturer. So let's get into a couple of things real quick before we move on to paddle shifters, because I know people are going to be polarized by that. On the Honda side of things, they told... Well, essentially, they sent a warning shot to the corner of 16th and Georgetown in Indianapolis a few months ago, telling IndyCar that they needed to lower their cost or Honda was out. They essentially don't see the return on investment uh, from the series, which makes a lot of sense. For Honda, joining NASCAR makes all the sense in the world. They get to actually put their best-selling sedan, the Honda Accord, on track. People get to physically see that car on a racetrack. It is very different than just seeing a Honda branded IndyCar, you know, which just has Honda over the engine cover or something like that. Being able to actually see the car that you can go buy and drive on the road. And I know there's going to be comments being like, oh, they're not stock cars. They look nothing like stock cars. It hasn't been stock. Car. I get it. Whatever. The front end of these race cars looks very similar to what you can still buy and drive on the road. And for Honda, at the end of the day, motorsport is a marketing platform right? This is all about marketing. And for them, being able to show off their cars, whether that be the Civic or the Accord or whatever else they have in the future, makes all the sense in the world. So for NASCAR and them coming here, the cost could be justified by that ROI. And on the IndyCar side right now, it just isn't. And that's unfortunate because Honda and IndyCar are synonymous together, right? They were the sole engine supplier for years on the IndyCar side before 2012 when Chevy came in along with Lotus, but we don't talk about Lotus the same way Germany doesn't talk about certain parts of their history. You get it. And now if Honda leaves, that is a death blow to IndyCar. IndyCar will survive, of course, right? Ilmar will just continue to make engines. They'll just be a generic engine. And that's essentially what Honda wants, but... At the end of the day, they might just be looking for an excuse to leave, and NASCAR might be the next best spot for them. And I know some people are going to say, well, NASCAR is expensive too. You're right. But like I said, if the ROI makes sense, they're going to go ahead and do it. The same reason why they're pumping money into their sports car program and both IMSA and WEC, well, potentially maybe WEC down the road. It, it makes sense. They see the ROI from that, and they're going to continue to support that. The cost is not that great compared to what IndyCar is. So for Honda... Maybe they are coming to NASCAR. It would be great. Where would they end up at? Nah, who knows? They could go to, in, well, Michael Andretti does have good ties with Honda. Obviously, his biggest sponsor in Gamebridge is one of the biggest sponsors for the Spire Motorsport team. Spire does have strong ties with Chevrolet, but if Michael Andretti were to, say, buy into that team, maybe they become the factory Honda team. Either way, there is a team out there that will automatically become the Tier 1 team for Honda, the same way Joe Gibbs Racing became the Tier 1 team for Toyota when they came in. It makes a lot of sense if they were to do it. We'll have to wait and see on exactly, you know, who ends up there. Justin Marks loves to do wild things. Maybe Trackhouse goes there. Stuart Haas Racing looks like they might be knocked down from that Tier 1 Ford um, level after Front Row Motorsport just got added on Thursday morning, but who knows? I'm excited to see what happens because another manufacturer coming in means that we get more competitive cars on track. It also alleviates some of the pressure that are on the other three manufacturers because you have to think a team or two is going to go over to Honda. That allows them to free up some resources to put into other cars within their camp, which is not a bad thing at all. That's what IndyCar teams, or specifically Ford, or specifically Chevy and Honda, have been so desperately wanting from IndyCars to get a third manufacturer to alleviate some of that pressure that is on them. 
So we'll wait and see what happens. I would just love to see a fourth manufacturer. On the topic of paddle shifters though, I know this is a hot topic issue. It's a hot button issue. People on Facebook are going to be going crazy over it, but Jeff Gordon was on the Dale Jr. Download this week. Great interview, go listen to it if you haven't already. And he said that he expects we could see paddle shifters sometime in the near future for the NASCAR Cup Series. Obviously, when NASCAR went from the Gen 6 car to the Gen 7 car, they dumped the four-speed H-pattern transmission in favor of that five-speed sequential gearbox that the Cup cars currently have. Essentially, what it is is you bang it back, you go up a gear, you bang it forward, you go down a gear, you get it. Um, pretty simple solution there. The idea about moving it to the steering wheel, the paddle shifter, is essentially what you see in sports car racing, Formula One, what some road cars have, what Jeremy Clarkson refers to as a flappy paddle gearbox. It just doesn't fit NASCAR. It works in sports car racing. It works in IMSA. Why? Because, well, the cars that you're going to go buy at the showroom typically have those paddle shifts in them. So having it on the race car, again, makes a lot of sense. And it, it does have some sort of road going application to it. On the NASCAR side of things, you're not buying a Camry with that. And anytime that they do actually have those paddle shifters in them, it's because it's an automatic and they want you to feel like you're actually driving. And you're not. That's debatable. It doesn't matter. But if Jeff Gordon is talking about this, an equity partner in Hendrick Motorsport, a guy who is deeply involved in running that team on a day-to-day -day basis, this has at least been discussed. It has at least been built out and it has at least been talked about being trialed at some point, which is unfortunate because I get why fans are upset about this. I don't love the idea of having paddle shifts in NASCAR. I love the idea of an H pattern gearbox. Uh, the sequential gearbox is fine for me. It, it, it's whatever. It takes a little bit of the skill out of it, but the Australian Supercar Series, they abandoned the H-Pattern gearbox back in 2008. They went to a sequential gearbox. And then in uh, 2022, they were going to switch from that sequential gear lever over to paddle shifters. And all of the drivers that tested it, in the words of Shane Van Gisbergen, NASCAR driver Shane Van Gisbergen, he said, Bennett, it's terrible, it's trash, we don't want it. Bennett means trash it in Australian, if you didn't keep up. So they hated it, and the series listened to him. They said, all right, we're not going to do it. You guys want the, you guys don't want it, we're, we're going to listen to you. So hopefully NASCAR does listen to the drivers if the drivers don't want it. Um, there is something cool about, you know, a driver just being able to take the wheel off and throw it out the window if he wants, or maybe launch out at another car. If you start building out these steering wheels, putting uh, paddles on them, maybe putting a little bit more electronics into the wheel, we're not going to see guys launching them across the racetrack anymore. Not that we need that, I'm just saying. You know, people are going to have to be protective of their wheels now. And I don't necessarily know if that's an avenue we want to go down at the moment, especially at a time where we talk about the cost of the series just continuing to rise. Do we really need to make steering wheels more expensive now? Who knows? But it is an interesting proposal. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. And, you know, Honda coming in would be great. Paddle shifters, not so great. Let me know in the comments what you think about Honda, what you think about the paddle shifting Um you know, potentially coming in. And I'm gonna have to make another video about what's going on in the Ford camp right now because things are changing. And uh, I think somebody might be on the outside uh, when this is all said and done. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.